Hi, Michael Valley Titty, graduate gemologist, and I want to have another gem talk with you. This time it's on spinel. Now I got to tell you, of all the gems um, that I sell, love spinel, and I wish it had a different name. I'll be honest with you. And the name isn't bad or anything like that. It's actually a Latin word from spina, and, and it's from the Latin word spina, which, by the way, is still the word, because I'm Italian, that we still use in Italy today, spina, which means thorn. It means a thorn tip, because if you see it in its pure version before it's been tumbled by nature, it looks like the tip of a thorn. It's almost like two pyramids, one stuck, the two bases stuck on top of each other, and then you kind of elongate it, and it looks like the tip of the thorn, and that's why we call it spinel from the ancient word spina. Anyway, uh, spinel is a great, great stone. Its chemical composition is magnesium aluminum oxide which is very important because that aluminum content in it makes it very, very strong. Matter of fact, spinel has a Mohs rating of 8 on the hardness scale, so it's an extremely durable uh, gemstone. And for toughness, which means its resistance to breakage, according to GIA, it's very good. So, you know, it's right up there. I mean, it's as break-resistant, quite frankly, I find, personally, um, as a ruby or a sapphire. It's not as hard, which means it'll scratch more than a ruby or a sapphire would, but as far as breakage is concerned, spinels, you can wear them all the time. And by the way, the Mohs scale is a comparative scale, so the actual physical difference between a, a stone that's 9 and 8 on the Mohs scale is really negligible. It's not as much as you think. It's a comparative scale. It's not one based on actual uh, numerics. It's an ancient scale. But anyway, um, it is eight, like I said, in the most scale, very, very durable. It is part of the isometric crystal system. So there's seven crystal systems that make up everything. Only one of them is isometric, also called the cubic crystal system, which is the same crystal system as a diamond. So that refers to how the molecules have been stacked up. And this is how geologists, you know, separate different parts of our world. So this is a part of the isometric crystal system. So why is that important? Well, all the other crystal systems in gemstone, when a light will enter the stone, it will be split into two waves. It goes in one direction and it comes out 90 degrees to each other. So one goes this way, one goes the other way. There's advantages and disadvantages to that. Diamonds, like spinel, the light goes in one way and it comes back out in one direction. So if you're looking for a gem that can be very brilliant, okay, isometric stones are the way to go. That's why a lot of garnets shine so much. It's because the light goes in one path and comes out one path. So uh, they tend to be a little bit more brilliant. I think, honestly, Spinel is a very underappreciated gemstone. Now, it comes in a big, big myriad of different colors. Um, and one good thing before I get into that is that spinels, for the most part, are not color treated whatsoever. Now, there are some that they're beginning to treat, but basically, I would say 95% of all the spinel you will buy undergoes no treatment whatsoever. It comes in colors of red, pink, and this is all natural spinel. I picked this up in Burma when I was in Burma. So all these colors are exactly as Mother Nature made. So you can see here that there's pink, there's orange, there's blue, there's violet. Then there's, of course, that cobalt blue, which is just, that's a whole different topic. I'll do a separate show on that. There's green, there's brown, there's black, there's yellow, there's red, there's pink. And these stones are tend to have a luminosity that's really, really fantastic. And take a look at how these things fluoresce. The one great thing about spinel is that the pinks and the red do fluoresce. And the reason is, is they have a high chromium content, ladies and gentlemen. So that chromium is very, very, very important because that is what's going to make the red and the pink. So in all the world of spinels, the most expensive are the cobalts. And of course, there are the red and the pink. They're the ones that are very, very highly desirable. A side story on spinel is that when you go to a place like Burma, the reason that they have all the ruby that they have is because they have so much spinel. Remember what I said about the chemical composition? Okay, the chemical composition of, of spinel is magnesium aluminum oxide. Ruby is aluminum oxide. 
So the spinels formed first and they sucked from the ground all the magnesium, they absorbed it and they became spinel, leaving only aluminum oxide, which is how the rubies form because in that part of the world, there's a lot of chromium, which is why when you go to the mine there and, and, you're, and they're sifting the gem gravel, you'll see the red spinels and the red ruby all mixed together. The spinel is actually older. It formed first and it made way, it cleared the path for all the rubies to form. So spinel is very, very important that way. What I like about spinel is it's natural clarity. Most spinels, you can expect a beautiful, beautiful degree of clarity. As a matter of fact, if we go back to our, our turnstile here and I shine my little flashlight here, you can see how clean these stones are. So if you're looking for clarity, now this is untreated and this is raw. This is literally, I picked this up from the mine site. This has not been polished. This has only been washed with tap water. That's it. And look at how clean these stones are. Very, very, very clean. You can get spinels in secondary deposits. These are usually where you get the clean ones. And this is the primary. Primary means it's still stuck to the quartzite host rock. But over time, this will get loosened and it will tumble. And if you go into the heart of that stone, that's where you get the clear stuff. By the way, that whole process takes millions and millions and millions of years. In spinel, you can also get spinel that will show asterism. Asterism is the, is the uh, cat's eye effect. You know, like the, you get the star that you get in the ruby and sapphire. That's extremely, extremely, extremely rare. In my life, I've only seen a few of them. And then you can get spinels that do color change again. Very, very rare and something that even myself, I have not offered because it's not anything that I can get in bulk. Um, I would encourage everyone to get spinel. It's, like I said, an underappreciated gemstone. It's like the cobalt. I mean, we're so in tuned, I think, in the gem world. And for customers, we think of diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, and they're fantastic. I sell them. You buy them. I own them. My family owns them. But there's all these other stones that the prices are actually, I believe, lower than what those stones are really, really worth. And the reason is, is because people just don't understand them. So the demand isn't there. Even though the supply of great spinel is limited, the demand isn't there because people don't know about it. So if you're looking for something exotic and very different to invest in, spinel is a really, really great thing. And if you can, I would encourage you to get the ones that are brighter color when they are available. Again, I would encourage you to get the red or the pink or the cobalt. Those are the three colors. So the cobalt is that wonderful, beautiful blue. And the only reason I don't have it here is that I want to do a separate show on the cobalt because that's something very important, something relatively new. But the red and the pink are spectacular. Did you know that the purest red spinel out of Burma actually, in my opinion, looks just like a flawless ruby? It's because it has this, remember, it only has the magnesium but it has the chromium aluminum, so it has almost the same chemical element as the ruby, but it has the clarity, and they look like a red diamond. They're fantastic, and they actually cost more than most rubies. So spinel is great. It's something I would encourage you to own. Again, very, very durable. They do not color fade. So if you live in Florida or California, and I'm jealous, by the way, uh, guess what? You can wear your spinel every single day. It's also a really good gemstone for the men. So if you're looking for something for your husband, um, your partner, a son-in-law, grandchild, I think spinel is very, very beautiful because again, it comes in that whole host of colors. And you know what? It can take the knocks of everyday life. And that's my talk on spinel. I hope you enjoyed it. And spinel, again, is something that I would encourage everyone to at least look at and to, to try to own especially in the colors that I've told you about, because there are examples of spinels I've seen when I remember in Tucson not long ago, somebody had a small parcel of this, it was a bluish purple, because you can get in spinels colors mixing. It was fantastic. It looked almost like tanzanite almost, but it had a bright, because tanzanite is doubly refractive. This is singly refractive, so it has the brightness, the brilliance of a diamond. And it was just a spectacular parcel. But he only had a few of them. If he had more, I would have bought it. Anyway, spinel is something that I know you'll enjoy, I know you'll love, and I encourage you to explore the world of spinel because it's a world that's waiting for you.